everyone. Welcome to 10 Minutes Astrology Podcast, the most easy way to learn astrology with professional astrologer. I'm Rod Chang. I am Alejo Lopez. Hey, so, well, you know, last week we have an introduction to the house. So I think our audience probably can wait to understand, to step into the house because it's totally new thing. Most people probably know sign and uh, yeah. planet. But a house, probably there's something new for them. So let's start. So the angular house, last week we, 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 we explained because they call the angular house because they are around the angle. So we call the angle is like horizon and uh, ascendant, descendant, and the MC, the highest part in the sky, and uh, on the zodiac, and the IC, the lowest part in the sky of the zodiac. Yeah, we were saying the 10th house and the 4th house, we were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten houses. Instead of ICMC, maybe. Yeah, they will get confused. Yes. Yeah. Let's that, start with that. So, how about we start with the uh, first house then? Okay, so the first house. All right. So the first house, I think it's this picture, this idea of the things that are beginning, maybe a good uh, image, the idea that the, 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 the day is beginning from there. So mm -hmm. it will rule the beginnings. So the first mm -hmm. house might describe how we begin things in general, but it might also describe how we came into this life, the moment of birth, how, what, what happened when we were first born. And that will probably kind of imprint something of equality on how to start things. I always say the first house is how you enter a room. When you enter a room, it's mm. the, first, the first thing you see of that person that's entering the room. Mm. So it will describe a lot like what people see in us, like our kind of we, we call it the kind of the mask that you put in to go into the world. What is the first thing that people see in you mm -hmm. when they see you? Usually with time, we also start identifying to mm -hmm. that image and we start realizing that we are also that. Um, but sometimes at first, when we're, when we're young, we don't really see it. It's more people mm -hmm. pointing out, ah, you look like this. Ah. Um, and then we learn that actually we are that, we are that energy. So yeah. basically the first house is about who we are ourselves you know mm -hmm. it's our identity our vitality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, how we approach the world what we expect life to be because this is how we came into the world mm -hmm. and perhaps how we begin things yes exactly so for for our audience you probably feel familiar because this is also how we describe ascendant mm -hmm. last time so because they are they are together the first house beginning from ascendant so basically they share nearly same meaning but uh, where well, they have some tiny detail, slightly, slightly, I don't want to say different, but uh, there's slightly things to describe, but we ignore that at this moment. That's, and then how about the seventh house? So the seventh house is the opposite to the first house. Mm -hmm. So we would say it's exactly opposite to that. So if mm. in the first house, I find myself, I find who I am. In the seventh house, I find other people. I find who other people are. Mm. So in the seventh house, I will see, uh, I, I will be able to read, the kind of relationships, not the mm -hmm. kind, maybe, yeah, how how relationships are going to be developed for this person, mm -hmm. what's going to be interesting for this person to find in relationships. And sometimes it's the qualities that they will look for other people when they establish relationships. So usually what we have in the first house, it's something that with time we are going to embody. We're going to get we're going to get it. We're going to get to be that ourselves. Mm -hmm. And what we have on the seventh house instead, it's something that it's hard for us to be, to embody mm -hmm. that. So we put it outside. So we meet with people who can do that for us. Because mm -hmm. for us, it's not so easy to be that planet that we have in the, mm. the seventh house. Oh, you just remind me something. Because uh, sometimes um, we, will, we will hear some um, astrologer who is more psychological approach. They will say mm -hmm. this, is, this is kind of a projection. Yeah, I'm, yes. I mean, I am a psychological astrologer, so yeah. of course there's a bias here. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is what I see. Yeah, the seventh house is what we project. It's kind of mm -hmm. our shadow in some ways. It's something that mm. we cannot we cannot see as ourselves. So, But the energy is there, so it mm -hmm. has to be played out in our lives. But we don't know how to be that mm. energy, that planet. Mm -hmm. So we meet with people who can be that planet for us. Mm. Or it could also be that we meet with people that the type of relationships the, the, the planet is described not so much mm -hmm. perhaps by the person itself, mm -hmm. but the kind of relationship we create. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, nevertheless, this is still, still part of you, still you. Don't say, exactly. some, I remember some people will say, oh, that's that's a seventh house, that's someone else. No, no, that's still you. Okay? Yes, yes, it's still yeah. you. Because yeah. if you look at people and you look at the relationships they make, 
you're going to realize that some people make this kind of relationships, other people make other kind of relationships. Yeah. So it's because of who you are, mm -hmm. what people you feel drawn to. So it's mm -hmm. always talking about yourself. Yes. Yes. So the other two house of the angular house is also quite important in our life. For example, the tenth house, and uh, it beginning from MC, we, can, we will explain it later. But uh, it's tenth house usually is related to people will say it's related to career or the mm -hmm. calling vocation. It's not vocation holiday. It's vocation. You're you're calling <laughs> for me because I I'm it's not. It's really not holidays there now. <laughs> because my unless you have such a tar, is there maybe? <laughs> yes. Okay. So calling is your job. Is your job is career. But if it can describe your social state, it is very yeah. interesting because I think this is related to um, this part. This house is located. Describe the highest part of zodiac in the sky when you were born yeah so i usually yeah. explain to my students say if you forget how to interpret the 10 house oh most people will not then you just raise your head to think about it that's the highest exactly. point highest point you want to achieve so that's about career that's about the social state that's about your achievement and your public image some people will describe the how different, but we will leave it there for later. Yeah, but it's about it public is. image. And also, interesting, traditionally, um, traditional astrologers say 10th house is about mother. But, well, modern astrologers are more likely to describe both a 10th house and the 4th house are parents. Yeah. Are parents. Yeah. So that's the slight different way between the modern astrology and the traditional astrology. But we can see, you know, Ten house is part of the parents and describe your relationship with authority. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it's this idea. What you're saying is high up in the sky, mm. so it's what you want to be seen for, mm. and it's also the authority of the sky, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So as you're a child, as you're a little kid, you just like, oh yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. So what okay, about the fourth house? Yeah, fourth house. Okay, as we just learned, it's part of a parents too so but uh, traditionally say they say father but it's also family and the root mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. i like a beautiful image most ast astrologer will describe if you are a tree then you root it on the ground and then the root is your full house it's your yeah. full house and you grow up from there and then you spread your branch and the flower and the fruit in the 10th house. So they yeah. are related. They are related. So is your, your family, your childhood, also your ancestor, your ancestry relationship, how you related with your, with your family. But it's also your house because the fourth house is about your house life, how you organize your life. I, I quite like something very interesting. Usually you can describe um, your house, where you live, or how you decorated your, 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 your house with the planet or sign in the fourth house. It's very, very interesting. I think if you understand this, you can start to see it, you know, the, 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 the planet or the sign in the fourth house. It would be very interesting. But psychologically, I like this idea. They're talking about the uh, sense of belonging. You are yeah. related to those people you feel connected um, with the root, with the bloodline or family. So you belong to, you're part of them. This is also another part of the um, full house, the meaning. So how we do the homework and example today? So let's do an example. Let's pick a planet and let's do it mm. in two of these houses and then the homework would be to try to practice that in the other two houses. Lovely, lovely. Should we start with uh, sun? <laughs> okay, let's do with the sun. Yeah, let's start yeah. with the sun. I think it was the first planet we did also, so it's nice. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let's do the sun in the first house. Mm. So remember we said the sun is about your identity, who you are, your self-expression, mm -hmm. your vitality, uh, something about creativity, your goals in life. Mm -hmm. So then it's the first house. We said it's how you start things, how you begin things, how people see you, how you approach life. 
unlike mm. the self, who you're going to become, right? So there's an overlapping actually of meanings in some ways. And so you could say that if you have the sun in the first house, mm. then we need to bring these two things, ideas together. So how you start things may have to do a lot of a lot a lot with your goals, what you expect to achieve, what you expect to become. Mm. Perhaps also how you start things is going to be very creative. It's going to express who you are. Mm. Perhaps also the way you approach life is actually uh, a, a way in which you can shine, you can express who you are. When you enter a room, everybody will see you. You 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 spread warmth. You know, it's mm. like ah, here's the sun coming into the room. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> And I feel always feel like with the sun in the first house, because this idea that the, 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 the first house is something most people see of us at first, and then we start realizing that we are that. Mm -hmm. I think with the sun in the first house, there's also a quest to find who you are. You know, ah. Your approach to life is discovering who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is my idea. What do you yeah. think? Would, would yeah. you add anything? Uh, probably not, because I think that's all. Oh, that's quite a lot, quite rich, so people can understand the sun in the first house. But when the sun moved to seventh house, does that mean we give this power to other people? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say we give this power to other mm. people. Yeah. Um, but I would say we discover who we are. We discover our sun. We discover our creativity, our vitality, our identity, and our goals by meeting other people. So Beautiful. <laughs> I think relationships are super important for people with sun in this. Yeah. I'm thinking now of Carl Jung. He had the sun in the seventh. Okay. And I think Freud, uh, I'm not sure if Freud also had it in the seventh. No, I don't think so. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I think Freud also had it in the seventh. Mm -hmm. And there's this, um, you know, this the talking cure, which actually you meet with other in order to find oh, out yes. who you are. Yes. So the sun, sun because sun is also mean important. So the sun in seventh house, other people are important. Relationships are important. But that doesn't mean you give to them. But you find yourself through them, through the relationship, through the uh, your relation, you, you, or, or what do you say, partnership. It's not yeah, only exactly. just a, it's, just, it's not just a love, 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 love or, or, or marriage, but also when you, when you work with other people one to one, this kind of a relationship. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So it's and, very, yep, yep, please. No, I was thinking also about with the sun in the seventh sometimes because it's hard for you to be in the limelight. Mm. You might be attracted to people, not only for relationships, as you were saying, with partnerships also, who prefer to be in the limelight. So you can you can yeah. experience that by being with them. You know, so yeah. it's like, yeah. Yeah, so interesting. But in, in the end of the day, you still have to take it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in the end of the day. I mean, because this is how you learn to be. Sun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Instead, of say, oh, oh, it's them. We say we learn through them. It's quite a beautiful yeah. way. I really like that way. So, well, our our homework our exercise would be try to explain, try to think about how to make interpretation about the sun in tenth house. As we just say, it's related to career, it's related to you know public image, or four house is related to family and our sense of belonging. That would be kind of interesting to, to learn, you know, you understand a little bit more about astrology. Thank you for listening and watch 10 Minutes Astrology this week. We learned the angular house. They are first house, seventh house, 10th house, and the four house. We really hope you enjoy this episode and please like and subscribe. If you have any question, you can come to join our Facebook group at 10 Minutes Astrology Group, or you can send us email aoa.inquiry at gmail.com. Well, you can also find me on Instagram at aoa.ukrd, and you can find Alejo at Liminal Cosmos. Liminal Cosmos. So next week, Alejo, what are we going to talk about? Next week, we're going to talk about the other, another group of houses, which yeah. is the second, the eighth, Mm -hmm. The fifth and eleventh. Am I right? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. If you can, I think we can still count that. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, stay in tune. See you next week. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.